My Weirdest School. Book number three. Miss Brown is Upside Down. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pilot. Chapter seven. You snooze, you lose. Round one of the brain games is about general knowledge, announced Dr. Carbles. Representing elementary school will be two members of their gifted and talented program, AJ and Andrea. My parents and Andrea's parents clapped their hands. And representing Dirk School will be Morgan Brocklebank and Tommy Smith. The whole audience erupted in applause like they had just won the Super Bowl. That kid Tommy looked like a real doofus. Miss Brown attached little microphones to my shirt and Andrea's shirt and gave each of us a buzzer to hold. She told us to push the button if we were able to answer a question. You can do this, Miss Brown whispered to us. Be quick and be smart. Then she got off the stage. Is everybody ready? asked Dr. Carbles. Ready, we all replied. Okay, question number one, said Dr. Carbles. Who was the first president of the United States? Any dumbhead knows that. Buzz! I pushed the button on my buzzer, but Morgan Brocklebank buzzed in first. George Washington, she shouted. Right, said Dr. Carbles. That's ten points for Dirk School. I knew that, Andrea whispered to me. Well, hit your buzzer, I whispered back at her. Question two, said Dr. Carbles. In what year? Bzzz. 1776, shouted Morgan Brocklebank. That's right, said Dr. Carbles. Ten more points for Dirk. What? That's not fair, I complained. We didn't even get the chance to hear the question. You snooze, you lose, said Morgan Brocklebank. That kid Tommy next to her was just standing there with his finger up his nose. He was no help at all. Dirk School now has 20 points and elementary school has zero, said Dr. Carbles. Next question. Who invented buzz? Haha, <laughs> I buzzed in before Morgan Brocklebank did. Thomas Edison, I shouted. Oh, sorry, no, said Dr. Carbles. Thomas Edison is not correct. The question is, who invented the Franklin stove? Buzz. Franklin, shouted Morgan Brocklebank. That's right. Ten more points for Dirk School. It is now thirty to zero, said Dr. Carbles. Next question. Name a greenhouse gas that is flammable and comes from cow farts. What? What kind of a question was that? Bzzz shouted Morgan Brocklebank. It's very bad for the environment. That's right, said Dr. Carbles. Methane? I never even heard of methane. How did she know that? The score is now 40 to 0, said Dr. Carbles. This was humiliating. Morgan Brocklebank kept answering all the questions right. Those dark dorks were crushing us. Their parents were yelling and screaming. Nose picker Tommy was all excited about winning, as if he had anything to do with it. 
I thought you memorized the whole dictionary and the encyclopedia. I whispered to Andrea. I did, she whispered back. I know all these answers. Morgan is just faster than I am. Andrea was useless. It looked like it was going to be up to me. I tightened my grip on the buzzer. There was no way I was going to let Morgan Brocklebank and her little nose-picking buddy beat us. Who wrote Little Women? asked Dr. Carbles. Buzz! A really short lady, I shouted. Incorrect, said Dr. Carbles. Why do we have tides? Buzz! My mother runs out of laundry detergent and has to buy more, I shouted. Sorry, tides are caused by the moon, said Dr. Carbles. What animal? Bzzz. Penguins, I shouted. No, the correct answer is elephants. Arlo, you're getting them all wrong, Andrea whispered to me. Slow down. You need to wait until he finishes asking the question. If I wait until he finishes asking the question, Morgan Brocklebank will beat me to the buzzer, I told her. What state makes the most pencils? asked Dr. Carbles. Bzzz. Pennsylvania, I shouted. Wrong. Who developed the Dewey Decimal System? Bzzz. Mr. Decimal, I shouted. Oh, so close, said Dr. Carbles. It was Mr. Dewey. Nice chai. And now it's time for our final question. What was Shakespeare's first name? Bzzz. William, Andrea shouted. That's right, said Dr. Carbles. That's ten points for elementary school. It's about time, I told Andrea. Round one was over. I put down my buzzer. My hand was all sweaty. The score is a hundred points for Dirk School and ten points for elementary school, announced Dr. Carbles. Bummer in the summer. It was the worst moment of my life. Morgan Brocklebank sneered at me from across the stage and mouthed the words in your face. We lost because of you, I told Andrea. Why didn't you hit your buzzer? No, we lost because of you, Arlo, Andrea told me. You need to think before you give an answer. You probably don't even want to go to Pizza World. I do too. We went back and forth like that for a while. Then Miss Brown climbed up on the stage. She put her arms around both of us. Calm down, she said. Anybody can answer silly trivia questions. It takes creativity to win the brain games. We still have plenty of time to catch up. It's time for us to move to round two, said Dr. Carbles. Chapter 8. Carry that weight. Round two would be worth a hundred points, and it was winner take all. We were going to compete to see which team's bridge could support the most weight. Miss Brown helped us all carry the bridge of love out onto the stage. Then we watched as the Dirk kids brought out their bridge. Look at that, Ryan said. Their bridge is amazing. He was right. The Dirk bridge was ten times bigger than the bridge of love. Our bridge was sort of like a plain old plank that you would put across a little stream. Their bridge looked like a real bridge that you could drive a car over. They even decorated it with little road signs.
Oh no, we're finished, moaned Alexia. We might as well just give up now. Think positive, Miss Brown told us. It doesn't matter which bridge looks better. The only thing that matters is how much weight it can support. Dr. Carbles walked around the stage, looking at both bridges. Then he asked us to tell the audience what materials we used to build them. We made our bridge out of toothpicks, said Neil the Nude Kid. We made our bridge out of matchsticks, said Morgan Brocklebank. Very creative, said Dr. Carbles. Now it's time to see which bridge is stronger. Some big guys who looked like weightlifters came out carrying a bunch of barbells. They lined them up across the stage. Dr. Carbles told them to put the lightest barbell on the dark bridge. Then he told them to take the barbell off and put it on the bridge of love. Both bridges easily support 20 pounds, Dr. Carbles announced. Very good. Let's see if they can handle 30 pounds. The weightlifters put the next barbell on the dark bridge. Then they put it on the bridge of love. Neither of the bridges collapsed. Both bridges can hold 30 pounds, Dr. Carbles announced. Next, the weightlifters put the 40-pound barbell on, and both of the bridges were able to hold up. This is when things get interesting, announced Dr. Carbles, as the guys went to get the 50-pound barbell. I was nervous. We all were. Emily weighs 51 pounds, and our first bridge couldn't hold her. But when the weightlifters put the 50-pound barbell on the bridge of love, it held up just fine. Both bridges can support 50 pounds, Dr. Carbles announced. Let's keep going. 60 pounds, 70 pounds... Those barbells looked heavy, but both bridges were still standing. It's holding up, Andrea said excitedly. The bridge of love is amazing, said Emily. Eighty pounds, it was so exciting. We were all on pins and needles. Well, not really. We were just standing there on the stage. If we had been on pins and needles, it would have hurt. Ninety pounds. Everybody wanted to know which bridge would win. The tension was unbearable. There was electricity in the air. Well, not really. If there was electricity in the air, we all would have been electrocuted. Bring out the 100-pound barbell, ordered Dr. Carbles. The weightlifters brought out a huge barbell and carefully rested it on our little bridge of love. It held up. I couldn't believe it. Then they picked up the hundred pound barbell and lowered it onto the dark bridge. Crunch! Crash! The bridge collapsed. Matchsticks went flying everywhere. The audience groaned. Elementary school wins round two, announced Dr. Carbles. You did it, shouted Miss Brown. We were all yelling and screaming and freaking out. It was the greatest moment of my life. I looked across the stage at Morgan Brocklebank and mouthed the words, Na 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 boo boo. Great job, both teams, said Dr. Carbles. The score is now 110 to 100 in favor of elementary school. 
Let's move on to round three. Chapter nine. Talking trash. Round three was called spontaneous. I had no idea what that meant, but a little Miss Know It All told me spontaneous means making stuff up on the spot. Doctor Carbles went over to speak into the microphone. In round three, he announced, "Each team has to write a poem." Oh no! Everybody looked at me. Arlo, you're good at writing poems," said Andrea. "I am not." Actually, I am good at writing poems. That was how I got into the gifted and talented program in the first place. I just don't like poetry. And the poem said, "Doctor Carbles must be about garbage." What? Doctor Carbles said we would have two minutes to write down our poem. Miss Brown gave us a pad and a pen. We huddled together like a football team. Who writes poems about garbage? Whispered Ryan. That's a dumb topic. Whispered Michael. What are we supposed to say about garbage? Whispered Neil. I don't know," whispered Emily. "We'll come up with something." Arlo, you need to come up with something," whispered Andrea. "Why me?" I whispered. "Why don't you write a poem about garbage?" "I don't know how to write poems," she whispered back. "That's your job." "We're running out of time," whispered Alexia. I tried to think of a poem about garbage. I was concentrating so hard that my brain hurt. I can't think of anything. I said, "Time's up!" shouted Doctor Carbles. Okay, let's hear the garbage poems. Dark school, you go first. Tommy, the nose picker, went out to the middle of the stage, holding his pad. He read his poem: "Roses are red, pens are inky, perfume smells nice, but garbage is stinky." Everybody clapped. Man, that poem was lame. Ryan whispered to me. You gotta be able to come up with something better than that, AJ. Wonderful, Tommy," said Doctor Carbles. "Okay, elementary school. Let's hear your garbage poem." Ryan and Michael pushed me out the middle of the stage. Everybody was staring at me. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I had to think fast. Okay. Give me a beat, you guys," I said. Michael, Ryan, Neil, and Alexia started the beatboxing. Everybody started bobbing their heads to the beat. I closed my eyes, and then I started rapping. Dirt and dust and junk and dash. Now you know I'm talking trash. I know this may make you throw up. But I think that when I grow up, I will have a secret plan to be a well-paid garbage man. Other kids can be accountants. I'll live on a garbage mountain. It may cost a million bucks, but I'll buy ten big garbage trucks and drive around all day in haste to pick up everybody's waste. I think garbage is quite pretty, especially piled up in the city. You may think that it's a handful when they take it to the landfill, but garbage makes me sing and jump, especially at the garbage dump. I know that it will make you gag, but I like to smell a garbage bag. There are things that I can't do. 
like run real fast or cook a stew. I can't sing or drive a van, but if I can't do it, garbage can. I'd like to make one small proposal. While I'm here at your disposal, let's make Monday garbage day and Tuesday too. What do you say? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as well, and garbage weekend would be swell. What would we do without garbage day? We'd have nothing to throw away. By the end of my rap, everybody was clapping with a beat. Even the dark parents were into it. Doctor Carbles went over to the microphone, and the winner of round three is Elementary School. You did it, AJ! Miss Brown shouted. We were all shrieking and hooting and hollering and freaking out. Now the score was two hundred ten to one hundred. We were winning big. It was the greatest moment of my life.